This is the all new Range Rover Sport. It's a third generation of Range Rover Sport since 2005, and it's shaping up to be one of the best SUVs of 2022. It even comes with tech you can't get on the full fat Range Rover. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this new car. Buy, sell, car, wow. The new Range Rover Sport looks similar to the old car, but there are plenty of important differences. For starters, the new grille is thinner and more square than before, and the headlights have a new minimalist design that's much less fussy than on the old car. The lower bumper looks much more modern than before, and its new vents and creases look sportier than the big square opening you get on the full-size Range Rover. You can get some black trims or contrasting bronze ones depending on which model you choose. These colours show up on the vents just behind the front wheels as well. Speaking of which, the new Range Rover Sport comes with a range of wheels, including some fancy carbon fibre inlays and others that measure a whopping 23 inches across. That's just as big as the rims on the larger Range Rover. The new Sport model has also borrowed flush door handles from that car and this new model gets rid of all the fussy creases and lines you got down the side of the old Sport. The changes are even easier to spot at the back though. The old car had some blocky square brake lights but the new Sport comes with super thin lights that look more like they belong on a Jaguar than a Range Rover. The boot lid is very smooth too and the number plate is fitted to the rear bumper instead of underneath the rear windscreen. You'll spot some extra back trim underneath this with some shiny exhaust tips. This is completely different from the Range Rover where the pipes are hidden behind the bumper. But what do you think of this new car's design? Do you prefer the full-size Range Rover or this Sport? Let me know in the comments. The new Range Rover Sport's interior is leaps and bounds ahead of the old car's cabin. It looks completely modern, mainly thanks to that massive, slightly curved touchscreen and separate digital driver's display. I'll tell you more about these two in a bit. The steering wheel is completely new and the dashboard takes a fair bit of inspiration from the larger Range Rover. Essentially, this means there are loads of horizontal lines, lots of contrasting trim, and some neat hidden air vents. The heating controls for these are mostly the same as on the Range Rover, but the Sport comes with its own centre console with a more curved design and none of the vertical metal bars you get in the bigger car. Just like that Range Rover, however, you can get 22-way electric adjustment with massage functions for the front seats. Passengers shouldn't feel left out in the back, though. They sit higher in the new Range Rover Sport than the old car, and there's an extra 3 centimetres of legroom to give them space to stretch out. Land Rover has also given the new model a more practical boot. Pack it all the way to the roof and you can carry five adults plus 835 litres of their luggage. That's 55 litres more than in the old Range Rover Sport. The new Sport comes with loads of different engines to choose from. There's a pair of three litre six cylinder diesels called the D300 and D350. These produce, yes you've guessed it, 300 or 350 horsepower. There's also a P400 model with a three litre six cylinder engine which, yes, it has 400 horsepower. Next up are the new P440E and P510E plug-in hybrid models. These also use a three litre a six cylinder petrol engine mated to a 142 horsepower electric motor and they make either 440 horsepower or 510 horsepower respectively once again as the name suggests now the electric motor is powered by a 38 kilowatt hour battery that let you drive for up to 70 miles in electric only mode well that's what land rover claims the real world range will probably be a bit less than that it usually is with plug-in hybrids not bothered about economy though? Well, how about a twin turbo V8 model instead? The new P530 gets a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 with, you guessed it again, 530 horsepower. Now it'll only return 24 miles per gallon, but at least that's 17% better than the old Range Rover Sports V8 used to return. And who really cares when it comes with launch control and does 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds? That's just as quick as the old Range Rover Sport SVR. Every new Range Rover Sport comes with an 8-speed automatic gearbox and four-wheel drive. You also get high and low range modes and plenty of clever tech to make the new Sport just as capable off-road as the proper full-fat Range Rover. There's also a brand new off-road cruise control that Land Rover has never put in one of its production cars before. It constantly monitors the surface you're driving on and changes the car's speed and its suspension setup to make sure that you don't get stuck. This works alongside the new Wade driving mode to make sure you don't drive into deep water too quickly and end up having to make an awkward phone call to the breakdown services. Speaking of wading, the new Range Rover Sport can drive through water that's 90 centimetres deep. That is exactly the same depth as a Land Rover Defender and full-size Range Rover can manage. However, if you're really serious about off-roading, you might want to avoid one of the plug-in hybrid models because they lose out on 7 millimeters of ground clearance and 18 millimeters of axle articulation compared to the normal petrol and diesel models. The new Range Rover Sport comes with the firm's latest PIVI Pro infotainment system. It's pretty much the same as the one you get in the larger Range Rover. So there's a 13 inch central touchscreen and a 14 inch screen where you used to get analog dials in the old car. You get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and there's a wireless phone charging pad under the center console. You can also use Amazon Alexa directly through the car's voice recognition software which means you can control smart gadgets at home while you're on your way back from work in the car. There's also a new 
Hey Land Rover personal assistant that lets you do things like make phone calls and control the heating without using any physical knobs or touchscreens. Not only that, you can get the new car with an upgraded Meridian sound system with 1,430 watts of power and extra speakers in the headrests. These work as part of the active noise cancelling system to reduce the volume of wind and tire noise as you're driving along. Land Rover has confirmed that you'll soon be able to buy a pure electric version of the new Range Rover Sport. This new car is set to arrive in 2024, about the same time as a new electric version of the latest large Range Rover. If you want to see my detailed video on the new full-size Range Rover, click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen now, or follow the link in the video description. The new Range Rover Sport comes with an upgrade called the Stormer Handling Pack. The Stormer Pack adds a rear electronically controlled limited slip differential to maximize traction when you accelerate out tight corners. And it also comes with torque vectoring that can break the inside wheel to help the car make tight turns more quickly. You get rear wheel steering as standard if you fork out for a 510 horsepower plug-in hybrid or a 530 horsepower V8 petrol model. How much will those cars cost you? Well, I'll tell you in a sec. It might not come as standard like on the bigger Range Rover, but the sport system works in exactly the same way. It steers the back wheels by up to 7.3 degrees to reduce the turning circle from 12.5 meters to less than 11 meters. The new Range Rover Sport gets a similar active anti-roll system as the larger Range Rover to stop it leaning too much in faster corners. But there's one new feature in the Sport that you can't even get in the bigger Range Rover. It's a new kind of adaptive air suspension. And like normal air suspension, the new car's air springs can switch between different modes that use different volumes of air to help support the car's weight. The greater the volume of air in the chamber, the softer the suspension. Use less air to support the car and the ride will be firmer, also known as sportier. This tech has actually been used in other cars before, like the Porsche Cayenne, but this is the first time Land Rover has put it into one of its models. The new Range Rover Sport comes with a boatload of safety kit. You get automatic emergency braking, front and rear parking sensors, cruise control, traffic sign recognition, and lane keeping assist as standard. There's also a 3D surround view camera system that shows you exactly how far you park from the curb. And if that isn't enough to protect your massive 23 inch alloy wheels, there's also Land Rover's clear sight system. This shows a live video feed from the front bumper directly onto the infotainment screen so you can see what's under the front wheels as you're driving along. The new Range Rover Sport has gone on sale now, but it's quite a bit more expensive than before. Now you could pick up one of the older models from about £65,000, but you'll need at least £80,000 to get your hands on an entry-level new Range Rover Sport with a 300 horsepower diesel engine. That's about 15 grand more than an entry-level BMW X5 or Mercedes GLE, and it's about £20,000 more than a basic Audi Q7. However, if you fancy a top specification V8 model, that'll set you back almost £115,000. Talk about inflation.